Good morning. Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So the market is about to start once again. The market bell is about to ring in about one minute. Today, we got to look at what's happening overseas. The British pound, the sterling plummets to a new low. Will this continue? And what does this mean overall for world trade, for inflation, for Bitcoin? Well, let's discuss these things and more. All right, my, my bell's not working anymore. There we go. So smash up the like, subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit that notification bell to get notified of all my streams. Follow me on social media, check out CryptoZeros.com, and make sure you follow my other channels as well. Good morning, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're off to a new week, and we could be flipping in the green. So that is good. So the futures market hasn't updated yet, but you can see NASDAQ flip to the green. Dow and S&P barely, I mean, barely in the red, about flat. Right, but this morning everyone was paying attention, looking at the British pound. Actually, last night when uh, UK's market opened up, it was a lot worse. It was a lot worse. So it's actually recovering a little bit right now. So you could see it is at 108, 108 per dollar right now. I think last week when I covered it, or over the weekend, it was 109. And days before that, it was like 113. And days before that was 115. Days before that was one. I mean, it is, it is absolutely brutal right now. If you are in the UK or you hold a ton of British pounds, you are you are feeling it. Forget inflation. This is this is money. Your buying power, at least against the USD and other currencies around the world, is is disappearing right in front of your eyes. And it's not just with the the pound. Uh, uh, in uh, in Europe overall, the euro is still collapsing, uh, and these numbers are actually better because last night, like I said, it was w much worse. GDP or GB <laughs> GBP actually went down to like 103, and the euro was like a 95 cents or something. So both of these currencies are currently just absolutely collapsing right now and plummeting versus the dollar. But why is this happening? You know, why, why all of a sudden? It doesn't seem like things got much worse, right? But it, it's really because of what was announced last, I think, Friday. It seemed like it was so long ago. But it was announced that there would, there would be, like, this, this whole slew of tax cuts. Um, and people analyzed, you know, what those tax cuts um what they're really about and what they're going to do and who they're going to help. And it turns out most people think that those tax cuts will help the rich. So uh, people are not too pleased about that, that the tax cuts are actually hitting the middle class and lower class more than it's hitting, uh, than it's hitting the rich. And also, um, it also means that the government is going to be bleeding more. There's going to be less money to be collected. So what does that mean? Uh, they're going to go more into debt and, Basically, people are putting together that the situation is is uh, is not getting better with the slew of uh, announced tax cuts that's coming. So that's the reason why. And as for Europe, well, you know, this whole energy crisis thing is getting worse and worse and worse. I just saw this. We already know Nord Stream Pipeline 1 basically ha have been shut down by Russia. And uh, it was reported not too long ago that the new pipeline, Nord Stream 2, also plunged overnight to basically nothing. We, it dropped from 300 to 7 bars overnight. And that means less gas is flowing into Germany and overall to, to Europe. So this whole situation with, with energy is going to continue on in Europe and I don't know how long. I, I don't know when it's going to end. You know, obviously the war going on right now. There's a lot of nuclear threats being thrown out there. Zelensky thinks it's real. And, you know, hopefully it doesn't escalate. But, you know, the situation between Russia and, and Europe right now is not getting any better. So this is also contributing to the downward 
free fall of the euro right now. So that's what's happening. And of course, when you have other currencies going down, you know what goes up? The dollar. The dollar, the DXY, continues to go up. Does not seem like it wants to come down. I see people keep trying to chart the DXY, saying, oh, yeah, you know, we just hit the top of this channel. We hit this. We're at whatever, right? But here, here's the thing. You can see right here, new 52-week 50 week, week high. The DXY ignores charts. It, it, it will keep going uh, as long as these other countries suffer from their their uh, their collapse of their currency, basically. Um, and it's not just Europe. I'm hearing China. I'm hearing Japan. Same thing. Their dollars or their currencies are just getting weaker and weaker and weaker versus the dollar, which is why you have bonds and notes that are skyrocketing right now. Two-year Treasury at 4.3%, 10-year at 3.75%. I remember hearing an interview maybe like three or four months ago when these analysts was talking about the 10-year Treasury uh, breaking above 3%. And they said, well, that that's crazy. That's nonsense talk. Like you can't have a 10-year Treasury above 3%. That's like insanely high. And we're at close to 4% now. That's how strong the dollar has gotten and, and really shows how much fear there is out there right now, right? So that is what's going on. There is one person, though, that thinks he has the real cure for inflation, Steve Forbes. And he mentions about how all these countries around the world are trying to fight inflation through through raising rates and curbing demand. He's like, that's the wrong way to look at it. The better way is to stabilize currencies. I read this. I'm like, okay, that makes sense, right? Why would you not want to stabilize your currency? Like if you're a UK right now, why would you not want to do that? But how do you do that? How do you stabilize the currency? Well, this guy, Steve Forbes says, well, uh, everyone needs to go back to the gold standard. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, no one's going to take this seriously. So he was proposing that countries worldwide go back to the gold standard and start buying gold. And that's how you stabilize your currency, by backing everything with gold. I think we're way, 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 way beyond that. And we have seen that gold has not held too well either, even though it has not gone down nearly as much as some of the other investments or currencies. But I just don't see that. You go back to the gold standard, it's going to prohibit the amount of printing that can be done by the Federal Reserve and other central banks, and there's no way in hell they're going to go back to that. Uh, but it's an interesting thought, though. I don't know if there's any other way to stabilize currencies other than, I don't know, just just reinforcing uh, the fact that your country's going to do better. I, 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 don't, I don't actually know. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Um, all right, but with all that said, the good news is, the good news is, today we're still seeing a pretty good recovery day so far. Um, look at that. Things are turning into green, right? Bitcoin is coming up a little bit. So people are turning to something better, at least temporarily today. But overall, I think more and more people are finding out about Bitcoin. They don't like what they're seeing. They don't like to see their money disappear, right? They want something better. So this makes sense. A social interest in Bitcoin hits two-month high. Even as Bitcoin is struggling right now around 19000 the searches for Bitcoin continues upwards because people are fed up with what's going on, right? There's just so much bad news recently. Bad, bad, bad. But what's good is we have Bitcoin. We have an asset that's better than gold, more scarce than gold. And something that's not controlled by any bankers out there. Controlled by the people. Controlled by co code. That's what we want. Right? So, that's the good thing. And overall today, we're, we're seeing a, a slight recovery. Um, if you look at some of these other things, like, you know, a lot of these charts and metrics and models all show that we are at the bottom. We're at the the tail end of a bear market, something that I don't like to say often, but you can see, you know, we're, we're pretty much at the same point looking at previous uh, bear markets before for Bitcoin. We're right at the same spot, even though it's been 
It's been iffy. Um, but you know what? What do they say? It always gets... It's the darkest before dawn. Right? Good things happen afterwards. And I do believe that is that is coming. Um, what else is there? I mean, you look at this. Number of addresses sent into exchanges. Still very, very, very low. No one really wants to sell Bitcoin right now. Outside of whales and whale manipulation, there's no retail investors trying to sell Bitcoin at this point. It would just be absolutely silly. And most retail investors that were thinking about selling and already done so, and they're already out of the market. So it's not, it's, uh, it makes sense. Um, and yeah, that, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I, there's a few other things. One other, <clears throat> one other thing that doesn't relate to Bitcoin, but it relates to crypto as a whole. And I'm surprised to hear this. A lot of you guys know in the U S for New York, they have what's called a bit license. It's like additional license placed upon exchanges and any any company that deals with Bitcoin and is very, very strict, which is why some exchanges do not operate in New York. And California was thinking about enacting the same thing. And Governor Newsom actually vetoed it, saying that it will cost California tens of millions of dollars. And uh, they want to wait for federal policymakers to reach their own conclusion on crypto first. So this is actually a win for crypto. So now you don't have all these exchanges being banned from California either. So he gets it. Just just let it go. <laughs> Collect the tax dollars because everyone needs it right now. Every state, the federal government, everyone needs it. Um, and let the let the the policymakers in Washington figure it out first before we make a declaration. But you know, it's probably because he just wants more political clout for this. Uh, so the, I, I guess there's nothing wrong with that, but it's, it's a good, it's a win, if, especially if you're in California. Um, what's not a win is, uh, Do Kwan. Um, yeah, Interpol put him on the global wanted persons list. Um, and you know, pretty soon he's going to be like, he's going to be number one on the most wanted list. <laughs> so no one, still no one knows where he is. Uh, there are still some people going, you know, nuts over Luna Classic. I saw this. Luna Classic was finally dying until Binance caved in and said, okay, we're going to implement the burn. And now everyone's jumping in, pumping it, thinking that that 1.2% burn is actually going to do anything. Um, you know, I just kind of want to see it go. You know, I don't want to really talk about it anymore, but... Uh, unfortunately, Binance jumped in the game, <laughs> but I don't think it's going to do anything long term. All right. Uh, that is pretty much it. Uh, you know, the overall market cap did not move today. I think it's because this hasn't re re, uh, re updated. So let's see when this updates. It should be in the green. But ooh, what happened to XRP? What happened to the XRP army, the strong army? I was rooting for them. Uh, especially rooting for them to win the lawsuit. But uh haven't heard much about it recently. Anyways, let's do some uh let's do some QA. This reset. Yeah, this updated. Anything else doing good today? Um, Polkadot is doing good today. Polkadot just got USDT. Yeah, look at that pump. Now, that's that's not healthy for anyone. Um, IOTA's having a good day. Yeah, today's a pretty quiet day. David, Japan selling U.S. bonds in an attempt to save the yen. What if other countries follow? Won't this crash the DXY with oversupply to the market? Yeah, if everyone did. I mean, that's the biggest fear, I think, for the U.S. government, is that if everyone sells their bonds and no one starts buying anymore, um, that would be a total disaster. And I've said that yesterday. I need to clarify yesterday. I did, I did a video. I wasn't quite prepared for it, so I didn't have my thoughts together, but... 
overall, there are benefits to the Fed um, when inflation is high. And taxes does involve, but I, I mistakenly said like, you know, sales tax and stuff like that, which doesn't make sense. But the income tax part, they do collect upon and corporate tax they collect upon. So actually having higher inflation, so the price of goods go up, corporate profits go up, capital gains profit goes up, stuff like that. The Fed does collect more taxes. But ultimately, we're in such a deficit, the U.S. is, we need to raise money. We need to we need to borrow money, not just raise money. We borrow money. The U.S. government borrows money by selling bonds. And if no one is buying the bonds, and if there's an influx of too many bonds because Japan and other countries are selling it, that would be a total disaster. But uh, I guess the good thing is other countries are still buying it, so we don't have that problem. One day we may have that problem, but right now not so much. But Japan, what I hear is 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 in an even worse, dire situation um, because they're the only country right now, even though they have inflation, they still have negative interest rates. The Bank of Japan somehow refuses to raise interest rates. So, of course, people know that the yen is going to keep devaluing and debasing itself. So what they're doing is trying to sell U.S. bonds, raise more cash. I, I don't know if that's going to work long term. When do you think uh, crypto will be bullish again? Second half of 2023 or beginning of 2024? Cosmos is looking strong. Well, they just had uh, uh, Cosmos verse start yesterday, I think, and it's going to continue on. So we'll see if good things come out of the Cosmos verse. Hundred bucks says Doquan is hiding out in Jack Arda. I have no idea what country that is. Ninety nine percent of people on the run in Asia go there. I don't know where where that is. Uh, Crypto Cavalier, uh, don't give up hope, man. <laughs> things will get better, but I I don't know. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the UK, right? With the new prime minister coming aboard, uh, maybe there's radical changes. I don't know. I think she was pro crypto, but I think she's also pro tax cuts, from what I read. We'll see. Uh, there are a few other couple of things I didn't look at. I didn't. Uh, I didn't look at or show you guys. But I, I was trying to think about this. Like when you have when you have a country that's a really strong dollar, strong currency. What it means is your exports are gonna go down because other countries can't afford to buy your goods anymore. But what it also means is that imports will increase. Right, because now let's say you're 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 an American company, you could buy things from Europe much cheaper, because everything has collapsed. Right, so I was looking at like, okay, what does the U.S. export uh, to the U.K. and what does the U.S. Ex import from the U.K.? So I pulled this up right before the stream. So this is this is for going back to 2021. So. The United States export about $61 billion to the U.K. So this will drop off tremendously. So when we have a measurement in 2022, uh, we're going to see this drop off tremendously because since the U.S. dollar has gained so much strength versus the pound, it will drop off. So what does the U.S. sell to the U.K.? Number one thing is precious stones and metals. So <laughs> gold... Uh, well, probably more more scarce in the UK. Um, pearls, precious metals, metal. Okay, uh, oils and mineral fuels. Okay, um, so UK. Well, Europe needs that more right now. Aircraft and spacecraft, machinery and nuclear reactors and boilers, pharmaceutical products. Okay, so pharmaceutical products. So they will probably be suffering because of this. Elect electrical and electronic equipment, okay, they'll be suffering a little bit. And then optimal, photo, technical, commodities, not specified to any kind, works of art. How do we have $2 billion works of art being sold to UK every year? That's crazy. Works of art, collector pieces, uh, antiques, do you think uh, NFTs are included in there? That's crazy. How do we have $2 billion worth of art being sold to UK per year? 
Um, all right, plastics, organic chemicals. Okay. So actually the stuff I was looking for, like, you know, like books and games and furniture and all these other stuff, I guess the U.S. isn't strong in any of those things. But uh, aircraft, spacecraft, so like Boeing will probably suffer. Um, pharmaceutical products, I don't know, Avon or uh, whatever else, P, P and G, they may suffer. Uh, I, I don't know who's selling plastics, and I don't know who's selling works of art. But, you know, in reverse, this will increase imports from the U.K., which is around $57 billion last year. So there's a little, little difference. But what do we get from the U.K.? We get vehicles, okay, like, like Jaguar and uh, Range Rover and stuff like that. That will probably increase. We also get pharmaceutical products back, which is weird because we're sending it both ways. Um Electronic equipment, I don't know what kinds, aircraft, works of art. Again, we got we got like all this art and antique trading. So almost two billion back. Beverages, we get a lot of alcohol from from the UK. And we do get a lot of furniture. Well, no, not not too much. Mostly machinery, nuclear reactors, and boilers, which is weird because that's how much we send. We send $5 billion worth of machinery, nuclear reactors, and boilers, and then we get back $9 billion. So this is going to be increasing for sure. I don't know. Just just for those of you guys that care, maybe you hold on stocks, right? A lot of these things you may want to look at because you know that that the imports will increase, but the exports will decrease, well, depending on which country you're, you're, look, you're from. I don't know. Just, just an interesting thought. Um, morning, John. Let's see here. I missed the last super chat uh, or chat in general. Christmas is canceled. The Fed meeting will be 13 and 14. You know, it's already anticipated that the next two will be 75 basis points because uh, the Fed wants to get to 4.6 overall, and we're at 3. So you do the math. You know, 75 basis points for next two, right? It's already kind of priced in. Unless we get another reading next month when we get a reading of September. And when I say reading, like inflation reading, and it's still on its way up, then they may change it. But, you know, it should be going down. Overall, CPI went down. Core inflation went up. But we, we will have another reading and we will see if inflation, if that core inflation slows down. Because it should be. It should be slowing down. But, you know, I guess we'll see. Which country is leading the way in crypto adoption? I have no idea. The biggest three are the U.S., Japan, and South Korea. And I don't know which way, which country is leading crypto adoption. Maybe South Korea, and then United States, and then Japan. I think all three are pretty much the same. Art is used for money laundering purposes. Yeah, but I, I'm surprised to actually even record that. That's a tremendous amount. Tremendous amount of of art and antiques being swapped between the US and UK every year. Walmart has a glut of products they can't sell until current inventory is sold. You could see more clearance items. The same thing with Target. Any big box stores will have a lot more inventory that they need to dump. Because unfortunately, what happened with a lot of them is they knew that there were supply chain issues. So they like over-ordered and then they got all of it. And then now demand is going down and they can't sell it. So that, that unfortunately is happening right now too. And it's not helping the bottom line for a lot of these uh, companies. Uh, someone says, well, you can arbitrage Walmart clearance items. I have seen people say they do that. You can resell it on Amazon. There's a lot of videos that kind of show you that. I mean, you may get lucky here or there, but I just don't see how you could do that permanently. Um, obviously, arbitrage and just reselling. 
I used to do that a lot, a lot. Growing up in high school, I did it. In college, I did it. Certain times after college, I did it. I made six figures a year by doing it. But it's much harder now. The competition is fiercer. The fees are higher, and you don't see as much of the mistakes or or、um, inventory for sale. You know, I'll share with you guys. I guess it's、uh, it's been long enough where I could share, and I don't think、uh, Dell really cares. But、uh, for the longest time, for like a for probably like five years or so, five to ten years, I don't know if it's ten years, but for a period of five years, Dell computers would update the prices on their website every Thursday. Every Thursday, they would update it. They would put new specials or whatever, and The people in charge of doing that were absolute idiots. They would always make some kind of horrendous mistake. So I would spend, and this was probably ten years ago, fifteen years ago. I would spend probably like two hours every Thursday morning scouting every single page they have, including desktops, laptops, monitors, anything that they were selling. And every single Thursday. I would find some huge price mistake, like for example, I don't know, some laptop. Like at back then, you know, you had laptops that ranged from like four hundred to two thousand dollars, and you know, I would I would dig and dig and dig and find something where maybe a two thousand dollar laptop would be sold for a thousand dollars. So I, I would just load up. I I would order like forty of them. I I I order so much inventory every single week. That I had to rent a like a little storage area to hold it, and I would just sell it on eBay for the actual price. And I made a shitload by doing that every single week for years, <laughs> until one day Dell finally realized their mistake, and then they banned me and and probably fired the people updating the website. And、uh, and they don't do that anymore. They don't make mistakes anymore. <laughs> But that's a good story. That's a good story.、Um, gas price went back up, so I think next raise will be seventy-five basis points. You know, that's the funny thing. I just saw this headline too. Oil prices hit a nine-month low, so. Gas should not be going up; it should be coming down, right? In Europe, it's still high, but in the U.S., it should be getting better. Basically, it's going down because people are thinking there's going to be less demand. Like right now, hardly anyone's buying new cars, and hardly anyone's buying any cars—not just new cars, used cars too. And、uh, people are traveling less,、um, you know, trying to trying to save more, right? So that's why oil has come down. Yeah, you know, like, you know, you know, if you, if you're in Britain right now, or you're in Europe, like Germany, you know, like this is, I, I don't even know, you know, I, I don't know what you guys should do. I mean, like, whatever you have in your bank account, it could be ten thousand, five thousand, a hundred thousand, a million dollars, right? Whatever you have in your bank account, like every day. You look at this exchange rate, and every day you see your money buying power or exchange power dropping, and dropping, and dropping, and dropping. Like I don't, I don't know what you think about this. Look, look at like since the beginning, like January here, January twelfth, it was one thirty seven. Now it's at one o eight. What kind of drop is that? It's like a twenty percent drop, right? Twenty or thirty percent drop. That's a tremendous amount of drop since the beginning of the year. So, and this is, you know, inflation in the country is probably bad enough. Every country is suffering from inflation. But not only do you have inflation, but you also have this, this issue going on. I guess if you never buy anything, you know, in the U.S. or coming from U.S. is not a big deal. But yeah, I I think it is a big deal because there's 
there's a lot more implications to this. You know, the importing, exporting factor, there's a lot of other stuff that's going on. Um, so, I mean, it's just not good. So, I mean, and it's not, it's probably not very red, readily, uh, it's probably not really easy to buy USD if you're out of the country too. There's certain countries, I know like China, for example, uh, restricts how much USD you can buy, right? So what can you turn to? I guess Bitcoin, right? You could always turn to Bitcoin. When in doubt, turn to Bitcoin. Think that the DXY will dump hard after November 5th? I don't know. I mean, we have seen periods where it dumped and then uh, we, we saw, you know, mini rallies with Bitcoin and, and, uh, and markets. So in May, we went from 104 down to about 101. So that was a pretty significant one. And then in July, we saw it go from 108 down to 105. Right. And we haven't seen any big drop downs since then. I mean, it's just been increasing. We went from 109 to 113 really, really quickly within a matter of two weeks. Well, the good thing is, well, it's not a good thing for overseas. Well, maybe um, you'll, you'll probably see a lot more tourists you see more more people vacationing. Like, yeah, like right now, if you're taking a vacation, if you're in the U.S. taking a vacation to Europe, it's a lot cheaper. So there'll probably be more people doing it. But right now, with demand lower, with, with the rate hikes and people getting poorer, uh, I don't know if that's going to be the case. Why is Doquan playing hide and seek game? I mean, come on. Do you really think he wants to go back to South Korea and and go to jail? I mean, I'm sure he has some money. I my my theory is why he wanted to have that fork that that he forced it upon the people even though everyone didn't want that fork. No one wanted Luna Classic and Luna to be split off. It could have just stayed with Luna. But the reason why he did it is because you got a large chunk of it up front, right? I think it was like 25%. You got airdropped. He probably took that airdrop and sold it right away because he needed money. Because whatever he had in Luna was gone already. So he needed some way to support himself and maybe to pay taxes or other things. That's why he forced it. I mean, it was pretty, I think it's pretty obvious why he forced a, a, a fork. Because he needed to sell off something to make money. And then, you know, he, he I don't know how much he made from that. Tens of millions, hundreds of millions, and probably he's on the run. You know, he has plenty of resources to keep running. Yeah, you know, the the thing is, Goat Squeezer, I think you have it right. If the strong, dollar is too strong, it's going to cause emerging market currencies to basically crash, which will then turn more people to the dollar, which will then spike inflation more. That is true. That is true. Uh, Spenka 101. I'm from the UK. Even though I'm down, I'm still glad I have money in crypto right now. I mean, yes. I'm glad to hear it. Um, it's going to take some time, but more and more people will come to realize that we need something better. Again, I've been saying this for a little bit now. The more you learn about how financial system work, how money really works, how governments you know, they set an inflation, they print, and there's a lot of things that go on with it. But the more you learn about it, the more you realize that they're all just giant Ponzi schemes. They really are. They promise interest. They promise very high interest. And 
borrowed money on bonds and notes and stuff like that. Um, yet they can't ever repay all of it. They only repay in stages. They pay interest and repay when bonds mature, but they pay that back with new issuance of bonds. That's what a Ponzi is, right? You, you get people to deposit money and then you promise high interest. And the only reason why you can pay those interests is because you collect new money. But why do Ponzi's fail? Because they stop collecting new money and they can't pay out. That's my fear. The U.S. government is operating like a Ponzi right now. It's selling new bonds to pay back previous bonds and pay back previous uh, interest. But what if they can't sell new bonds anymore and no one buys them? That would be a problem. <laughs> you know? Uh, so that's why we need something better like Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is too small to to replace the USD as a global reserve currency. But maybe one day, maybe in 50 years, 100 years, all these countries, their fiats collapse and then citizens will turn to something better. And maybe then Bitcoin becomes a global currency. Sid Michael, appreciate it. Um, your thoughts on Phantom? Lucas, not, not much has changed with Phantom recently. They're still a good project. So not, not much has changed with them. Hey, George, will make scotch whiskey cheaper? Well, that is true. That is true. The U.S. imports a lot from uh, from U.K. I think alcohol is in here. Where, where do we see alcohol? Um, beverages, yeah. This is export. Oh, no, no, no. This is exports. We need imports. Um... Where's the alcohol? I saw a lot. Yeah, right here. 1.57 billion. And then and here's one from Europe. European Union exports to the U.S. So we get, man, we get $84 billion worth of pharmaceutical products from Europe. That's a lot. I don't know, a lot of it could be like, I don't know, COVID-related stuff. We get $12 billion dollars worth of alcohol per year from from the eu so that will increase that that's gonna go up tremendously in 2022 that's for sure and then i don't know what these photo stuff electronic stuff i don't know what we get from europe in terms of electronics but i'm sure a lot we get a lot of vehicles Hey, just FYI, for those of you guys that are looking for vehicles, speaking of vehicles and luxury vehicles, Range Rovers, their dealerships around me do not overcharge. So if you can find a Range Rover on their lot, it's actually being sold for MSRP. Just interesting tidbit there. Uh, opinions on crypto faucets, waste of time? Yes, extremely waste of time. And most of them will serve up malware on your computer so don't even think about going to websites that give you a faucet that has a faucet uh they operate only because they want to they want to steal your crypto away from you you know that's not a bad idea revview says uh george Khan should be in london 2024 you know that that's that's not a bad idea. If the, if the sterling continues to drop and it's below parity, let's say by 2024, it's, you know, 95 cents to $1 or something like that. Man, that'll make things real cheap for Americans. Yeah, Range Rovers are trash. I mean, they're really nice cars for like, like a month. And then you'll be visiting the service center every single month afterwards. It, it's really great just for tax deductions, really. Um, that's why people buy them. All right, guys. Let's conclude overall today. 
Bitcoin is doing a little better. I think is it it could be because people are fearful about currencies now. Right? I've been covering this for a little bit, but you know, the British pound, the euro, the yen, yuan, every currency right now is collapsing against the USD. So, what better way to preserve your wealth than put into Bitcoin? And as more and more people learn about Bitcoin, more and more people will come in. It's just good. It's just a matter of time. So stay strong, my friends, and I will see you guys later tonight, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So make sure you hit that notification bell and, uh, and check out my other channels. I am going to put another video out on Drivers Only. It's the greatest video I've ever edited, so you guys need to watch it. Make sure you head over to Drivers Only and subscribe and stay tuned for that video as well. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Lucas, have you heard of this project? GLO, if yes, no, I've never heard of it. I'm sorry. All right, take care, guys. Bye-bye.